Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So, I just drove a long way. Came down from Whidbey Island. I usually don't get off till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I haven't eaten. <laughs> I've been at work since 4 o'clock this morning, so I'm a little shaky. So bear with me. I want to read something. I didn't come with prepared comments, but I was reading a history book this morning at work. Got a little spare time, right? And I was reading about our founding fathers and things that were said and things that were done and why we are who we are and why we do what we do. So bear with me. All right. Anybody know who Thomas Paine is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all do. So he says, and I'm going to read it. Here. Thank you. <laughs> Got to support that flag, right? He says, these are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and the thanks of man and women. <laughs> Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. And guess what's going on right now? Tyranny. Tyranny. That's right. That's right. So I was at Olympia a couple weeks ago. I've been at one of these things every weekend. And some folks can attest to that. They see me there. Right? And I'm not, I'm not against a certain party. I'm not against a certain group of people. But what I am against is the loss of our freedoms, yes. yeah. right? Because here's one thing that I can tell you. I've been in the military most of my life. I spent over three years boots on the ground in Afghanistan. Thank you. And A, they don't want us there, and they're not going to change no matter what we do, right? That's number one. Side note. But here's the thing. When we start giving up our freedoms and our constitutional rights, when we start wearing these masks that maybe provide 2% safety at best, right? When we start doing this, once we give those up, you're not just going to get them back. You're just not going to ask the government, hey, government, can I please have my rights back? Just come on, just for me, right? No way. I'm here to tell you, our forefathers bled for these rights, right? Our forefathers gave up everything they had for these rights. The people who signed the Declaration of Independence signed their lives away the minute they signed it. Most of those men died broke and broke in with family members hung as treason, right? And they were on the verge of being hung as treasonous. Bad stuff happens when we give up our rights. And I've seen what it takes to get your rights back. I've seen what other countries go through. I've been to 50 different countries at least. And I've seen what these countries go through to get rights. And you do not want to have to shed blood to get your rights back. No, no. We need to do this the right way. We need to do this like this, gatherings. We need to be the loud ones. I'm here to tell you, we are the majority. We are. And yet, we struggle to be heard. Why do we struggle to be heard? Because we're not the squeaky wheel. We're too busy working. That's right. We're too busy working. We're too busy making a living, paying our bills, supporting our law enforcement. We're too busy doing the right things to stand on a street corner and yell. Well, I say it's our time to stand up. Yeah. It's our time to start yelling. It's our time to get out and get busy. And don't let them steal from us no more. Because that's what this virus is. They have scared us to the point where we're afraid to go out. We're begging them to take our rights away from us. Please make me wear a mask. Please don't let me buy seeds in Michigan. Please don't let me go fishing in Puget Sound by myself. Right? I'm going fishing tomorrow, by the way. If they come and write me a ticket, they will see me in court, and I will fight that damn thing all the way up to the Supreme Court if that's it. So this is, the, this is the thing, guys. I wish I would have been here at the beginning. Got kind of lost. Long drive. Long day at work. I'm probably going to pass out before I get home. <laughs> Somebody will feed me. Yeah, that's right. But here's the deal. We need to step up as a team. I, I am a conservative guy, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But what I am first and foremost is an American and a constitutionalist. Yeah. All right? I am pro-life, I'm pro-Second Amendment, and I believe the Constitution was written the way it was, and that you can't pick and choose which bits and pieces you like based on where you're at in life. Right. It is what it is. That's if you don't like it, then let's get together and try and change it. Right. I personally like it. 
it's worked pretty good for what 250 years or so we've grown to be the biggest most powerful nation in the world in the shortest time frame of any other large nation and it's because of our constitution and who we are and we're standing up and we're fighting for our rights so I'll, I'm gonna leave you with this so I'm driving down the road the other day right up in the country Skagit area and there's a little girl on the side of the road and she had a box of kittens she was giving them away so I stopped and I said I want some kittens I got a farm a couple rats in the barn right we got a, we we got Olympia with a bunch of rats everywhere but I don't know if the cats are gonna cure that so yeah bigger cats that's right so I stopped I talked to the girl I said hey I I think I want a couple of cats. She says, well, there's a catch. And I said, well, what's that? And she said, well, all, all these cats are liberals. No. Oh. And I said, what? <laughs> well, I can't trust a liberal cat to catch my rats. <laughs> They'll just go in cahoots with the rats, right? <laughs> so I said, I thought something was weird, and I went about my business. A couple weeks later, I'm driving down the same road. Saw the same girl. She had a box full of kittens. And I said, something's fishy here. I got to stop and talk to this girl. I said, What's with these kittens? She says, well, something's changed. And I said, what? She says, well, they're all conservatives. And I said, whoa, 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 slow down. Hold the phone. What do you mean they're all conservatives? She says, well, their eyes are open. So, so here's, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. We need to open our eyes. We need to see what's going on. We need to quit being blind. We need to quit letting them walk all over us. We need to be the loud ones. Yes. We need to get out and talk to people. Yes. And you know what? We are the majority. And if we get out and vote, and if you guys all talk to your people and convince them to all go vote, we can win this. We can take back a lot of seats and make Washington a conservative place, which it was when it was founded back in, what, 1859 or something? No, 79, I think. Right around there. Yeah. So it was, it, but it was a conservative state at that point in time. It was a conservative state. So we can do it again. Uh, go check out my site, www.timhayslowforcongress.com. Um, I got some cards and stuff in the truck, but I wanted to get up here real fast. Um, but I'm running the first congressional district, and uh, I'm running against... So, I'm sorry, second. He's running the first. I was thinking about you. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Second congressional district, right. I don't think I... Yeah, against Rick Larson. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Do nothing Larson, right? Right. I... I was going to close. Rubber stamp Larson. <laughs> Rubber stamp Larson. I was at a town hall meeting. Military guy. Person on this side of the room stands up and says, I hate the jets. They're too loud. Get those damn jets out of here. Another person on the other side of the room says, well, the airport's been here since way before any of us have been here. And where else are they going to go? And they got to train. I'm here to tell you. That's what I do for a living. I train pilots up at NAS Whidbey Island. And so... So this guy says we need him. This guy says we don't. Rick Larson stood up in front of us for about 15 to 18 minutes and said nothing. And I thought to myself, man, I got a lot to learn about politics. Because I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have done it. So I don't want to take up all you guys' time. I think we need to be loud. We need to be obnoxious. And we need people to hear what we say. Thanks a lot. Once again, I'm Tim Hayslow. And I'm happy to meet you. And if nobody's going to talk, I'll put some music on.